How's it going today, everybody? Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab. Welcome to the Guitar Marie. This time, I have something that is, well, quite often overlooked, but quite possibly a really cool guitar. Extremely unique, anyway. And I've never really put my hands on one for very long. So we're going to go through this together. All right, so what we've got going on right now is a guitar that was built in 1985, designed in the United States, built in Japan. It's a Washburn G10V. Washburn is kind of weird because they started strong in the uh, early 80s. You know, they've had endorsements from like Quiet Riot and Heart been around forever they're a really really old company and then just kind of you know nobody paid attention anymore despite the fact that they got people later like Nuno Bentoncourt and Dimebag Daryl uh, they're a little bit forgotten and their their 80s stuff their mid 80s stuff is sort of you know, overlooked. Uh, I actually really love the uh, 80s Washburn stuff. And I was excited to get my hands on one of these because it's got the Washburn Wonder Bar. And it's a bar that works without springs. I really paid zero attention to this back in the day because I was a Floyd Rose slash Ibanez Edge kind of guy. Later, I developed an appreciation for Kalers and things like that. It's time to look at the Wonder Bar. Unfortunately, this thing didn't have a case or a gig bag. However, the box looks great. And I got it from Music Go Round. So it should be in great shape. We'll see. I've never bought anything from them before. So let's find out together. I can tell you this. I was told this guitar was in fantastic shape with just like one little kind of weird anomaly in the finish right above the uh, pickup. So let's let's find out how accurate that was. I asked the guy to please make absolute certain that the bar for the trim was secured in a way to where it could not scoot around and damage the guitar. A plus, man. I ne I've never seen anybody do that. even marked it bar, which I love. Okay. Mm. Oh. Mother Mary and Joseph, this thing is freaking heavy. So before we get too crazy here, I have the Washburn 85 catalog. And there's my guitar right there. Uh, looks pretty cool. Not only that, but I have a installation and setup manual for the Washburn Wonder Bar, which is nice because sometimes when you have to figure this out on your own, it can be a little tricky. Now, this video, we're not going to dive into the Wonder Bar. We're going to look at it a little. We're going to kind of give it a little Pepsi challenge, taster's choice, a uh, little side by side with uh, Kaler Flyer. While they might look a little similar, they're completely different. Later, we'll do an entire video just on the Washburn Wonder Bar. When I tell you this guitar is heavy, I am not kidding. All right. Let's see here. A couple little nicks in the headstock. There is what they were talking about. It's so light that if I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't even notice it was there. Yeah, serial number K850605, so 1985. It's in exceptionally good condition for such an old guitar. Let's give it the true test. 
is it still in tune? Amazing. This was really kind of the thing back in the day before all of a sudden Ibanez and Steve Vai came up with that way to put the five-way switch in and give you the your, uh, single coil tones with the hum sing hum. So lots of these have that from uh, my uh, Model 6 Charvel to uh, my Kramer Focus 6000 few other things. Uh, this right here was very, very common. I think I've even got a PV that's got it too. So one per pickup. And this humbucker here may or may not split. Let's, nope, more than likely yes. More than likely a master tone, master volume. Let's get a look and see how hot these pickups are. So at 20K, turned up all the way. If we, oh, that's not what you want to see. Okay. So this one right here is uh, six, uh, six K ohms. That's not bad for a single coil. This one right here is 8.12. If we pop it up, We've got, uh, we're on, okay. So it's a little weaker single coil here than it is single coil here. That's fine. Okay, yeah, and if we put those two together, then they are in uh, parallel. Yep, okay. So that should give us some interesting tonal combinations. Now, what's going on with this pickup right here? Oh no. Music around, you're doing so good. That's okay, we'll take a look in a second. Definitely something going on with that pickup. guitar sounds a little noisy it probably could use some shielding and this pickup right here there is definitely something going on with it so Let's take a look at the Wonder Bar. Right off the bat, the bar looks kind of weird. It's got a weirder angle. It goes in this socket. Boy, is that stiff. But, this thing gets high marks for all the rollers. And there's a roller there, there's a roller there. They make Kaler look kind of lazy. Fine tuners back here. And this is supposed to be the bar height adjustment. Let's get a look at how that works. Oh, wow. Here's a Washburn Wonder Bar. Here's a Kaler Flyer. They, they really do look very similar. Uh, but they also look completely different. So to compare this bar to this bar is like unfair, especially because this one actually uses springs and this one, 
they claim there's no springs it's a torsion bar and like i said before i'll tear into this thing and uh, we'll do a full video on the whole setup the whole shebang i've heard rumors that a flyer bar will fit inside here i don't know See, seems to be the same. Ah, but you know what? The threads are so long compared to this one that it won't let it dive if you uh, screw it all the way down. And this is thicker, but to be fair, this is the heavy metal uh, bar that came with the flyer. Yeah, the bar is quite different. The way that bar sits with the body, too, is just really weird. But then again, is it weird because I'm used to Floyd's? Or is it weird because it's weird? I really want to know what this particular hole does right here. Backwards motion adjuster by... Loosening this screw, more backwards momentum can be obtained, allowing for dramatic pitch raises. It is advisable before the, to adjust the arm height. So right now it's set to where we can't pull it back at all. Oh wow, that makes a huge difference. Well, it makes a huge difference in the fact that you can actually pull up. I don't know if I would call it exactly dramatic pitch raises, but this is 1985 we're talking about. So being able to do this, is a, it's a fair piece. I don't think it's getting any more than that because things about ready to pull out. Let's see, does it flutter? No. So if there are no springs, then apparently we can't loosen the tension. I wonder. Probably not the way this was meant to be installed but I did notice this little piece right here and it could be that this is supposed to go on like this I should really know this a lot better being the 80s guitar nerd that I am it could be that you're meant to put it in like that yeah that screws in nice and easy and now we can put this in here and the tighter you make it, the less that wants to move. The looser you make it, it just kind of flops around. So we're tightening up on that bushing and stiffening this up. Just like the Kaler Flyer, this actually has individual saddle height adjustment screws. And we've got little uh, rollers in here too, so that's great. Unlike the Kaler, we've got these little tensioners here that shove down on the uh, strings and force them in. So that's supposed to make it to where you can adjust more individually how much of the pitch is affected when you actually utilize the bar. It feels incredibly stiff like very 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 stiff and kind of clunky one thing about this particular bar that is very much like the Kaler is that it's single locking the ball ends are still on here so we're not locking it here and locking it here therefore there's all this extra string length and that is why it doesn't have quite as much 
of a dramatic drop in pitch as a double locking crown like a uh, Floyd or a Goto 1996 or a Kaler Spider or Killer or Steeler or any other number of locking tremolos that I'm forgetting. Uh, Ibanez Edge. I don't know how I feel about this weird one Allen screw for every string. Thus concludes the unboxing of this particular guitar. I am pretty bummed about the fact that uh, that neck pickup is dead, but I'll figure something out. It's not the end of the world. And um, the Wonder Bar, it's weird. This is the first time that I've touched a Wonder Bar since probably about 1986. I didn't like it then, and I'm not really that big of a fan of it right now, but unlike back in the 80s, I'm not a teenager anymore. So I'm going to give this thing some time to grow on me. As far as the guitar itself, it seems really pretty cool. The, uh, the ease of use with the uh, five-way switch as opposed to all these toggles is... Uh, now... There's a reason they don't really do this anymore. No matter what, it is an 80s classic, and you can tell just by holding the thing that it's a freaking tank. It's definitely well built, and uh, this bar is definitely over engineered. Like I said, in the future, I'll do something where I completely take it off the guitar, and we go through this thing every nook and cranny of it and uh, really, really figure the thing out. As of right now, this is like the stiffest bar with the least amount of play that I've encountered that locks up here. If you like all the action, all the sloppy action of a Bigsby combined with the hassle of a locking nut, then uh, the Wonder Bar might be for you. I always thought that the Kaler felt like a Floyd and a Bigsby had a baby, but um, this would be the one that they hide in the attic. <laughs> All right, man, I'm going to go have some fun with this thing and uh, try to figure out what kind of pickup I'm going to put in here. So until next time, you guys, this is Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab, making the world a better place, one forgotten 80s gem at a time.